Solving general chemistry problems, thermodynamics. Here are a couple of entropy questions. First, what is the standard entropy for the following reaction at room temperature? Well, the answer is minus 44.4 joules per Kelvin mole. Well, then what about this one? Same question, or is it the same reaction? Well, sort of, is the answer any different? Well, it is different. The standard entropy change for this reaction, as written here, is twice that for the previous, minus 88.8 .8 joules per Kelvin mole. Is this obvious to you? Let's look a little deeper into entropy and why we can have an absolute entropy when we are not able to do so for enthalpy. One of the challenges in thermodynamics is defining zero. The big challenge lies with internal energy and, by extension, enthalpy. What is the internal energy of a water molecule? There's energy in its vibrational and rotational motion, to be sure. There's potential energy in the interaction between the nuclei and electrons. But the atomic nuclei themselves contain internal energy. The oxygen atom has eight protons and eight neutrons that are held together by the strong nuclear force. A tremendous amount of energy is contained therein. But also the nucleons themselves, that the protons and neutrons, each consists of three quarks held together by the strong nuclear force. This is an even greater amount of energy, and those quarks and the leptons, the electrons, can be created out of the vacuum of free space with an additional tremendous amount of energy. If we were to attempt to add that all up, the internal energy would be enormous. As chemists, we are interested in energy changes in chemical reactions. Those kinds of energies, compared to these total energies, would be vanishingly small. We would always be subtracting huge numbers from each other, looking for significance out in the umpteenth decimal place. For enthalpy, a different, though arbitrary, zero needs to be chosen. And scientists have all agreed to assign that zero point to that of the elements in their standard states at a given temperature. Changes in energy on this scale fit nicely with chemical reaction energies and thermodynamics becomes a mathematically manageable discipline. Entropy, however, is different. Entropy is not energy. It is the dispersal or distribution of energy. And as such, we are able to find a convenient and absolute zero for entropy. This is the third law of thermodynamics. At zero Kelvin, any material can be seen to be crystallized into a perfect crystal with no defects. This is the absolute lowest distribution of energy possible for that substance, and its entropy is zero. All substances, molecular or atomic, can be seen to start at this condition at absolute zero. Any added heat, change in phase, etc. will only increase the entropy. We can define absolute entropies for all substances, each based on this idea of a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin having S equals zero. Over the decades, scientists have developed theories and completed experiments to allow the determination of entropy for substances from zero Kelvin up to useful temperatures such as 298.15 Kelvin. Theoretical work near zero Kelvin and measurement of heat capacity as a function of temperature and measurement of enthalpies of phase transitions allow us to accurately determine entropy at any temperature. Essentially, the integral of heat capacity divided by temperature gives that value. We find these results in thermodynamic tables. They are used like enthalpy of formation data, products minus reactants. Here is how this kind of data can be used in problems like the ones at the beginning. Determine the standard entropy change for the following reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. H2 plus a half O2 goes to H2O gas. We need to look up the standard absolute molar entropies for these species, scale for the stoichiometry, and calculate products minus reactants. Well, those values are for H2, 130.7, O2, 205.1, H2O, 188.8, all in joules per, per Kelvin mole. Calculate to obtain 188.8 minus 130.7 minus a half times 205.1 is minus 44.4 joules per Kelvin mole. Now recall, what does the mole refer to in the answer? It refers to the reaction equation itself. When the equation, as written, occurs more times, then 44.4 joules per Kelvin of entropy are lost. The system, the mixture of molecules of H2O2 and H2O, the system's entropy decreases by 44.4 joules per Kelvin whenever a mole of these reaction events occurs. Now think. 
Given what we know about entropy, does this make sense? Well, we have a mole and a half of gas phase molecules turning into just a mole of gas phase molecules. At the beginning, the hydrogen and oxygen molecules were able to move around independently through the container. Upon reaction, they are now tied together by the covalent bonds of the H2O molecule. Energy cannot be distributed as widely as before because of this change. It makes sense for the entropy to decrease. Now, just to emphasize this last point, consider the second question posed earlier. Determine the standard entropy change for the following reaction, 25 Celsius. This now is 2H2 plus O2 goes to 2H2O uh, gas. This is the same reaction, but I have written it down differently. Maybe I don't like to use fractional stoichiometric coefficients. It's my choice. But this equation and the previous one are both equally correct. They both correctly describe the stoichiometric relationship between the reaction participants. How does this affect the entropy? Same approach, same numbers, but a new calculation. Now it's 2 times 188.8 minus 2 times 130.7 minus 205.1 equals minus 88.8 .8 joules per Kelvin mole. This means that whenever the reaction, as written, occurs mole times, then the system's entropy decreases by 88.8 .8 joules per Kelvin. Both equations correctly describe the interaction between hydrogen, oxygen, and water. And we have used absolute entropy data, S0, to find the change in entropy for the reaction delta R S not.